I'm not being hyperbolic when I say that Chad CN's new command line interface or CLI is a revolutionary game changer. It's revolutionary because the combination of the CLI with blocks and then the connection to V0 and AI, I think it's going to set the standard for what we expect from component libraries here on out. But I'm getting ahead of myself. So if you aren't familiar with Shad CN, it is an open source component system based on top of Tailwind for styling and Radix for accessibility. And the unique twist here is that it copies the code into your code base so that you can alter the styles as you see fit later on. Now with the old CLI, you could initialize your app to work with Shad CN and you could add components like button and carousel. But with this new CLI, it can create an application for you. They've added a whole bunch of new components, including a lot of graphs, and they've added huge building block features like a sidebar and a login screen. Plus, there's one more absolutely knockout feature I'm going to show you at the end that shows opens up a world of possibility. You got to see it. It's really super cool. So in this video, we'll start with nothing, and we'll build out a multi-page Next.js application with a login page, a dashboard page, graphs, an AI chat section with just four Shad CN commands. Now there's a little bit of tweaking we'll do here and there. It's not no code, but it is a huge productivity accelerator if you know what you're doing. Let's get into it. All right, I'm going to start with the new Shad CN CLI here. You can see that it's Shad CN and not Shad CN UI the way that it used to be. I'm still doing at latest, so we get the latest version, of course, using the init command as we did before. But I'm also adding the sourcer option because what's going to happen is it's going to look at this directory, say you don't you don't have any application here, you don't have a Beat app or a Remix app or a Next.js app going, so I'm going to create one for you, and it's going to create a Next.js app writer application. And in part, in doing that, by default, it would put the app directory at the top, so that source directory will go and create a source directory for us, which is the, kind of the way that I like it. And then we also add this sidebar 01 building block that's going to add a page that's in our application that has a nice sidebar on it. We'll see that in just a second. Let's hit enter to see how we go. All right, so as we expect, we don't have anything in this directory, so I'm going to let it build us an XJS project. I'm just going to call it dashboard app. I'll take New York, neutral, and I will use CSS variables for theming. That's going to come in handy when we actually apply a new theme. And now it's done its usual init. It's created a components JSON file locally, and then it's set that registry, and it's updated our tailwind config as well as our globals. Those globals have those theme variables that we said that we wanted. And then it's also added a whole bunch of stuff. So it's added 23 files on top of what we already got from XJS. The first one is the route for dashboard. That's dashboard page.tsx. That's where that sidebar 01 is going to go. Then I created a bunch of components, app sidebar, nav main, and so on, that would run that UI. Then I brought in some helper hooks. And then I brought in what we would originally think of as ShadCN, which is the utils file, as well as any components that we wanted. In this case, it's going to bring in avatar button, collapsible, and so on. All of that great stuff. All right, let's go check this out. I'm going to go bring it up in cursor. All right, so we got dashboard launched. Let's bring a return all. And then I'll do pmpm dev to run it in dev mode. Let's go take a look. And now on port 3000, we get our Next.js landing page. Not bad. But we also get slash dashboard. Now it's got this whole sidebar thing going. Now this is where the little tweaking comes in. As I said, it's not no code. We do need to know what we're doing. So in this case, the component, I think, is sidebar. And then in the sidebar component down in here, yeah, there's this background accent 50, which is, I guess, a light gray. We'll get rid of that. All right, that looks a lot better. We took out that gray that was created by the sidebar container that was set up. But I got to tell you, like right out of the box, that's a gorgeous looking sidebar. And it's got everything you need. It's got all the nav over here as a control for selecting workspace up here. It's got a login system down here. I got to say the last job I was at, it took us basically a month in combination with the designer to completely work out the responsive sidebar. And it was a hassle. So having it like this out of the box is absolutely amazing. And this sidebar is what they're calling a block. So let's talk about this for a second. So we got the Shad CN UI library. 
And you're used to components. So you've got things like accordion and alert and avatar and badge and all that stuff. Well, now you've also got blocks. So there's a lot of blocks that are shown here. In this case, this is block charts 01. And you can actually see all of the blocks in the registry. So I go over here, we can see that we got the login and sidebar blocks, as well as authentication blocks, charting blocks, dashboard blocks, a login block, and as well as our sidebar block that we just used. So let's try out the login block. So go back into the cursor, stop the process, and this time I'm gonna do add instead of init, and I'll do login 01. So this new CLI has looked at that login block, seeing that the login block needs a button, and it's telling us, well, do we want to overwrite the one that's already there? I'm just saying no, we haven't made any changes anyway, but it doesn't really matter. Same thing with card, input, and so on. And so what it's done primarily is create this source app login. So let's give it another try. Go back to localhost, go to the login page, and now I've got a good looking login. Now, under the hood, this is not implemented, but the UI is there. And oftentimes when it comes to authentication, the UI is half the battle. So this is a lot you're getting out of the box. So let's kind of change this around to be a flow. So let's imagine that this is the logged out landing page for our application. It tells you what the application does and so on. And of course it has a login button. So let's go and implement on that. So I go over here to page. I'll bring in link from next link. And then right at the top here, I'll add a login button. So we'll make a link to login and then we'll bring in button. And to do that, we'll bring in button from components UI button. All right, let's hit save. Now we've got our login button and that takes us to the login page. Now the login page, once that's done, should take us to the dashboard. So let's do that. So let's jump on over here to login form. So now this is the form for the login. It's already got link and it's already got button. So let's wrap our login button in a link to go to the dashboard page. Now hit login and we're over on the dashboard. Awesome. So you got the kind of basic flow of an application there. You got the landing page, you got it going to the login page. The login obviously needs authentication and all that. But once you logged in, then you go to, in this case, the dashboard page to see what's up with your service, I guess. And you would obviously change the nav bar, which is actually easy to do. It's data driven. So that's a really good start. Now let's talk about theming because that's often what you want to do. So how do you do a new theme? Well, let's go over here to themes in Shad UI. We can customize it. We can say we want something in uh, violet, for example. And then all we need to do is just copy that code. We'll take that back over to cursor. We'll go to our global CSS. And then we'll replace everything in this layer base with what I just got from the site. And let's try. And now our progress bar has turned a violet as well as our icon up here for Acme Inc. Nice. Let's see how it affects the dashboard that we want to add. So let's go back into our building blocks and let's pick one of these. I'm gonna take charts 01. So how would I do that? Well, okay, let's go back over here. So go to cursor and again, I'll stop and I'll do MPX Shadzian add latest and then charts, drop it in there and I return. Okay, looks good. Now let's do PMPM dev. Now over in our dashboard, we're gonna go import charts 01. All right, now we got that imported. Let's go use it. Let's save and go back to our host. Wow, impressive. And so what an accelerant to development. And there are all kinds of blocks that you can bring in. Check out these charts here. All of these charts have corresponding blocks and you can just simply find the corresponding block that goes with that chart, bring that in, drop it in your page, add the data that you want that corresponds to the data that you want to put in that chart and you're good to go. But you haven't actually seen the coolest thing yet. But before we get into that, I do want to talk about my new course. It's Pro Next JS. So what you're going to get with Pro Next JS is a fully up-to-date course on the Next.js app router. You get a guided walkthrough of creating and deploying a Next.js based AI chat app with full authentication. And we don't just cover how to do it, but we also get into why it works that way and what your options are architecturally. But of course, it doesn't stop there. You get a full breakdown of all your CSS styling options, as well as what component libraries work well with Next.js. Then you get a full architecture tutorial on how to set up your application, how to organize components, share components between applications, test your application, use a monorepo, and so much more. 
and you go deep into React Server components, you'll learn all about the caching in Next.js, which can really trip you up, as well as how to set up TRPC, gRPC, GraphQL, and all the API options. And you'll learn server actions at a super deep level as we'll explore how to cache those you will see nowhere else. It's an amazing course that I know you get a lot out of, and I'm super proud of it. Go check it out today on pronextjs.dev. All right, let's go check out this super cool feature. So I'm gonna go to V0, that's the Versal AI UI building site. And I'm gonna go take a look at the chat that I had a couple of days ago, where I asked it, give me a dashboard layout with a line graph, a pie graph, and a chat section to interact with the AI. Of course, I could continue to rev on that. So let's go and bring this code into my app. And that's as easy as clicking the install button here, saying copy, that'll give us our command. Go back over to the cursor. We'll add that. It's again saying, well, I use card. Do I want to overwrite it? Nope. And button and input. All right, that's created a dashboard component. So let's bring in that. In this case, it's not the default. So we need to import it as just dashboard. Let's hit save and give it a try. Now we'll go back over to localhost, try it again. Nice. But of course, we have a sidebar and it's not handling dark themes. So let's go tweak that. So if I go to dashboard, it has a nicely labeled sidebar section that we can just get rid of. And then we can see that it's overriding the background to be gray 100. Let's get rid of that. And there you go, fully integrated UI of our own design. And of course you can make this data driven and build an app really quickly. Super cool. Now you don't need to use Next.js to use ShadCN. You can also use it in Vite. The current login and sidebar are not compatible with Vite or Remix, but the authors tell me they will be at some point. In addition, they're gonna be adding a lot of blocks. I can't wait to see what they come up with. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed that quick look at the Shad CN CLI. Definitely go check it out. Let me know in the comments what you think about it. In the meantime, if you like this video, hit that like button. If you really like the video, hit the subscribe button and click on that bell and be notified the next time a new blue collar coder comes out.